Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is Tuesday, July 19th, 2016. Here's a quick look what's coming up. Tonight, with over 140,000 signatures in tow, the White House scoffs at the petition labeling Black Lives Matter a terrorist organization. And cowardly commies attack Alex Jones from behind. That's next. It looks like the comet has started to attack Alex, and uh, and he defended himself. Crazy times. Oh yeah. Excuse me. Barack Hussein Obama has rejected a petition to designate Black Lives Matter as a terrorist organization. It didn't take long for the White House to respond to a petition that managed to get over 140,000 signatures in less than two weeks, asking the Obama administration to declare Black Lives Matter as a terrorist group. No doubt the longer Obama sat on this petition, the more signatures it would have gotten. And I think if it wasn't rejected so quickly, we might have been eventually looking at a million or so signatures. But it was rejected the petition's lifespan was cut short much like the lifespans of police officers in dallas and more recently in baton rouge cut short in all fairness there's also been plenty of people out there whose lives have been cut short by the police people like philando castillo and kelly thomas and countless others now, I want to read what it says in this petition, and then we'll give you Barack Obama's response. Plus, we'll take a look at what Hillary Clinton says about all this, and we'll compare all that to honest, reasonable, and rational thinking, because this is two ideologies that we're talking about here, and they're both very, very different from one another. First, let's take a look at what is in this petition. It is time for the Pentagon to be consistent in its actions, and just as they rightfully declared ISIS as a terror group, they must declare Black Lives Matter a terrorist group on the grounds of principle, integrity, morality, and safety. Terrorism is defined as the use of violence and intimidation in pursuit of political gains. Now you got that right, and this definition is the same definition used to declare ISIS and other groups as terrorists. Signed, we the people. Well, makes a lot of sense to me, but once you know it, Obama doesn't see it that way. In fact, he predictably disagrees, and, and once again, he gives the impression that he's actually siding with Black Lives Matter on this issue. Obama responded to the petition first by flat out rejecting it. He said the White House plays no role in designating domestic terror organizations. Yeah, unless they just happen to be constitutionalist or sovereign citizens, right? He went on to say he knows that there are some people who have criticized even the phrase Black Lives Matter. Imagine that. As if the notion is that other lives don't matter, and that is simply not the case. When incidents like this occur, there's a big chunk of our fellow citizenry that feels as if because of the color of their skin, they are not being treated the same. And that hurts. Oi, oi, bang, bang! 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 about they burden of, of whatever they said you're doing, you pull your piss out, you bust that. You pull your piss out, you bust that. Because at the end of the day, it's gonna be you against them. Yeah. And yeah. we need action. Come on. Take action. I don't give a whether you knock them over, whether you run up on them, whatever you do, you better take action. 
call for white people like myself to put ourselves in the shoes of those African-American families who fear every time uh, their children go somewhere, who have to have the, the talk about you know, how to uh, really protect themselves when they're the ones who should be expecting protection from encounters with the police. The effort for women to get the right to vote was contentious and messy. Uh, there were times when activists uh, might have engaged in rhetoric that was overheated and uh, occasionally counterproductive. But the point was to raise issues uh, so that we as a society could grapple with them. Uh, the same was true with the civil rights movement and the union movement and the environmental movement and uh, the anti-war movement during Vietnam. Uh, and, and I think what you're seeing now is part of that long-standing tradition. In case you couldn't understand what they were saying at the end of that video, that was a Black Lives Matter march in New York City where they were chanting, what do we want? Dead police. When do we want? Now. Barack Obama says that Black Lives Matter is a rational response and a justified response to racial profiling by police. Meanwhile, it is blatantly obvious, and there's plenty of evidence that suggests that the leadership among Black Lives Matter is calling for racially motivated violence and the murder and assassinations of police. That, my friends, that is terrorism. And they are promoting total war while lone wolves do their dirty work. Do you condemn the anti-police rhetoric coming from this hateful ideology? As a journalist sitting here on television, I don't have to condemn anyone, that, anything. That is something that well, you should I do. ask well, I other do. people around the country I that condemn their them jobs to condemn them. Just that. like I condemn the hateful the ideology out of groups like the KKK. The suspect said he was upset about Black Lives Matter. He said he was upset about the recent police shootings. The suspect said he was upset at white people. The suspect stated he wanted to kill white people, especially white officers. I condemn it. There is no place in American discourse for that sort of vile, vitriolic hate coming out of this ideology. You know, I never understood why a lot of people think that the only real black leadership in our country right now are people like, oh, Jesse Jackson, the Reverend Al Sharpton, and of course, Barack Hussein Obama. Those people, in my opinion, are not real leaders at all. They've never shown any real leadership. My good friend Larry Pinckney says that he, don't, he doesn't call them leaders at all. He says they are misleaders, and I happen to agree with him. But I'm here to tell you that there is plenty of good, strong black leaders in our country right now. And no better example than these two guys, Sheriff David Clark and Chief David Brown. In fact, if that was the party ticket this election, they'd certainly have my vote. And I think rather than calling it a Democrat or Republican party ticket, we could simply call it the take no party ticket of 2016. President David Clark and Vice President David Brown. Let's make America badass again. And we're joined now by John Rappaport, nomorefakenews.com. And John, let me get your take on this. What do you think about Barack Obama's response to the police shootings? I mean, he's quietly condemned them, but he's yet to respond, or I guess he's yet to condemn or disavow, I should say, Black Lives Matter. What do you think is up with that? Well, he's doing a squeeze play. I mean, it's a classic both ends against the middle. On the one hand, he's encouraging Black Lives Matter and the protesters and so forth, meetings. He, Loretta Lynch, the attorney general, of course, Soros money and so forth. And so this is egging these people on, do it more more signs, more crazy stuff, more not solving the problem, uh, you know, et cetera. But on the other side, 
and this is a big one that I covered recently uh, in an article. He's continued to militarize police forces all over America. We're talking about major heavy uh, armed forces equipment that is making a national police force. And of course, uh, he and others of that globalist ilk want to federalize all police. So this is a classic squeeze play to create chaos. Well, I think you, you said it perfectly. That's it. This, this is establishing order out of chaos. And then the federal government comes in as the savior. And I think the intent this entire time is to nationalize the police force. So when these people are out there protesting against the police, they don't realize that they're actually going to get more in the process. Absolutely. This is a game. Okay, we get these people to do all the protesting and the violence, and we throw in a few snipers and shooters, and cops start dying, and other people caught, are caught in the crossfire also are dying, and this goes on and on. And then on the other hand, we, you know, gen up the police forces, and I'm talking about even community, little community police forces mm -hmm. with armored vehicles and heavy weapons and so forth because that's going to be the final solution. And they couldn't do this without the help of the mainstream media. And how do you think Obama, how, did, how do you think he cheerleads this whole situation? What is he doing to encourage protest and maybe even encouraging the, the shootings and the deaths of police officers? Well, he's responding to it without the authority of a president. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the culture, the social this and that and so forth. These are all signals of surrender, basically. He's making this victims. Like, He's making victims out of everyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The manufacture of victims goes on and on and on. And that process, I mean, there are genuine victims, but this process of manufacturing them is endless. Yeah. There is no end to getting what you want if you are visioning yourself as a victim. It's a way of life. It goes on forever. And at some point, the violence is going to rise to a level where this militarized police is going to clamp down very hard. And now that's the final solution to this. And, and he's, arming, he's arming those police. I mean, come on. You know, you just look at it and you see. If he were saying, look, we have to, you know, dial back the police. And he was really serious about it. Okay, he's wrong. But if on the other hand, he's bringing in heavy artillery and weapons and vehicles and, you know, making this look and be like an army. Well, I was just going to say, and, and let's face it, the, the police, they are militarized. They look more like a standing army than traditional police of the past. And but also, we do know that there is police brutality. There is racial discrimination at, at times. I don't think it's nearly as bad as the media portrays it. But, for example, Philando Castillo, the, the young man that got murdered recently that was captured on video, the aftermath was captured on, on cell phone video, that guy was pulled over over 31 times in his neighborhood, and he never had a, 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 a he wasn't a felon or anything like that. So it does look like uh, racial profiling, but I think that... Obviously, rioting in the streets is not the answer. Certainly, shooting cops is not the answer. So I think that Black Lives Matter is not the answer, and they are just adding fuel to the fire. Am I right? Yeah. Look, this is being portrayed, all the protests and the violence against cops, this is being portrayed as this is the problem, the main problem of inner cities. That's ridiculous. Poverty, crime by gangs, drugs, total dependence on the government yep. for survival. These are the major problems that have been plaguing inner cities forever. And this is all being covered over. There is no attempt to solve the problems of inner cities. Not really. There never has been since the war on poverty started in 1966. That's all a cover. This is all a cover. This is all pretending that if somehow the police brutality was lowered a few levels, 
that inner cities would be fine. This is a total lie. There are millions of people in inner cities right now that are sitting there in their homes who have been hostages basically all their lives. They're watching these protests on television and they know that nothing good is gonna come of this because there are no real solutions here for what's really ailing inner cities and has been for a long time. Take away the manufacturing jobs through globalist trade treaties, mm -hmm. send them all overseas, throw people out on the streets. Now we're talking about actual problems, which the government has no intention of solving. Well, of course not. And this was all done by design. And that brings me to my last question. We have a, a minute and a half left. Who do you think is going to win the election? And what does America look like under a Donald Trump presidency compared to, God forbid, Hillary Clinton? I'd say right now, you know, it's 50-50 as mm -hmm. far as who's going to win the election. I really don't know. I mean, Trump has much more support than people are willing to admit in key states as well. But of course, you know, rigging voting machines, voter fraud of all manner can occur here. So we don't know what's going to happen. A Trump presidency is somewhat uncertain because... You know, this is a guy you want to hold his feet to the fire. Absolutely. You said this, Donald. Now show us. Prove it. Mm -hmm. With Hillary, it's a known quantity. We know You're what to expect with Hillary. More war, yep. more decimation, more cruelty, more desire for power for the sake of power. That's what you're going to get with her. And quite possibly, especially if they keep it 50-50, a quite possibly massive voter fraud. Absolutely. I would say even if not 50-50. Yeah. I mean, right now, there are people behind the scenes, I'm quite sure, looking at the key swing states where the election will be decided and saying, OK, what can we do to make this election work in our favor? So that's always a factor. Thank you, John Rappaport. No more fake news dot com. Stick around. Exclusive coverage of the RNC when we come back right after this. Seen outside the convention center moments ago in Cleveland, some pushing and shoving going on. Um, we're not quite sure who is involved, but Alex Jones, a conspiracy theorist, is somewhere in the middle of that crowd. There's a banner there about 9 11, research 9 11. That's what's going on outside the convention center. All right, we are marching up here to the uh, protest spot where. Black Lives Matter, the brand new, the new Black Panther Party, Revcom, QEP Newton Gun Club, which openly carries and calls for the killing of cops. That's where we're going now, right? All right, let's just cover this thing. Try to interview them later. Let's just cover this and just uh, try to document what's going on. Do you want to see George Soros and the globalists? The destabilization of this country, this is it. Ain't that camera that way, Buckley.
bunch of murdering scum worldwide. And George Soros is a Nazi collaborator funding these organizations trying to bring in total tyranny. And we're here as the American people saying that our free country is not going to have a bunch of dirty communists and globalist scumbags set up tyranny. We are here to promote a free, open election in this country and open a free market. Here, they want me to get in there. Let me throw it on the floor on them. Let him do it. We're here to tell you right now. We're here to tell you right now that the First Amendment stands against the evil of Mao Zedong and Stalin and Lenin and all the other garbage and communists for 70 years trying to start a race war in this country. The truth is, Americans of every race, color, and creed are coming together to make this country free and sovereign again. And that's why we're here to stand in defiance of the BLM and the New Black Panther Party and all these groups promoting violence and they're implying the local police officer is some type of terrorist and that it's justice to kill him like our president's been pushing. So we're here to face down the evil and let you know that we will never back down and that we're not afraid of you.
went a few blocks away from what happened a few minutes ago. Mr. Dix, the founder of one of the major communist organizations in the country, was having a Black Lives Matter event here in Cleveland, just a block away from the RNC. I mean, the communists have killed hundreds of millions of people. They're worse than Hitler. And they've been trying to foment a revolution in this country. And Obama and George Soros who's a Romanian communist, Soros, have been trying to foment this whole thing that if a cop kills somebody questionably in Minnesota, you go kill five cops in Dallas. It's, it's just the most crazy crap I've ever heard, or just randomly shoot people. So I've been against that. And I thought, well, let's go out and try to cover this. And so we went there, we were speaking, there were state police, local police there, you name it. And we were gonna go up on top of some of the steps to speak, so we start going up there peacefully. And some communists with red flags are saying Hitler, racist, Nazi. It's all on video. The video's going up on Infowars.com. Start hitting me. And so I just decided to go ahead and push the guy out of my way. And, I, and so suddenly I pushed through them. And then I didn't know it was the chief of police uh, of Cleveland. You can't make this up. It's right there. He grabs my arm, but he wasn't hitting me. So I stopped. And then another uh, off-duty police officer uh, who, who we actually ha have right here actually talked to him, so I didn't get arrested. Then all the state police came and grabbed me because I didn't realize they were punching the police. We have all this video attacking them. So the police, like Roman techniques, had their bikes like blocking six attackers at a time. We have all this epic footage. It's just crazy how this country's at war. When if you want to blame the federal government or even the state government, blame the governor or blame the president, like some average cop, you're going to blame them like they're out to get you? That's the craziest crap I ever saw. So. I literally thought we'd just go cover this communist Black Lives Matter uh, meeting, which is in Carl, uh, yeah, 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 Charles Dix and all these other guys. I thought, yeah, yeah, Cornell West, the big socialist. I thought we would just go cover this and that literally it would be okay. But now I realize it is so charged. Dead cops in Baton Rouge, dead cops in Dallas, dead cops in Philadelphia, dead cops amazing every city, Islamic attacks. I've seen Islamists out here. I mean, these people really think this is their time to overthrow America because Obama is encouraging it. If you if you overthrow any cities, it'll just make the stock market plunge. You'll be out of jobs. It's like it is the it is the takedown of this country. But all I want to get out there is the leftists are putting out tweets that I attacked the police. They would have arrested me if I did that. They realized I was pushing through some people attacking me. The police chief grabbed my arm. What's the luck? 
other police explain what happened. I, they, they, they protected me, ran me out of the area. I didn't realize, because you're only seeing what you're seeing, the police are being attacked. While they're getting me out of there, they're being punched and things are being thrown at them. Urine. There's supposedly video already out. They're throwing buckets of piss on the police. And uh, feces. And feces, excuse me. You can't make the, who the, who does this? So Kevin is an off-duty police officer. He was there. He, he actually protected us. And later we talked to him. So, we, so he's here with us a few blocks from where this happened. Uh, Kevin, we haven't scripted what we're talking about here. That's my perspective on what happened. But I was only seeing what I saw. What did you see? Come on in, guys. Talk to him. Well, after you were talking, uh, there was two gentlemen uh, of the Communist Party that came in and basically attacked Alex. Alex had to push them back. He lost his balance. Uh, went into the police chief, and I uh, secured the uh, individuals that were attacking Alex. Uh, the one kid was coming actually over my head to try and punch Alex. And uh, so we had, at that point, it was a real safety issue, and we had to scoot out of there real fast because it was getting extremely volatile and dangerous. So. What is it like for you to see this? I mean, I've never seen anything like this. I didn't expect this. Uh, well, I mean, it, it's it's sad. It's very sad to watch, you know, the fabric of our uh, of our values and our constitution. Um, and you know, these kids that have the the free speech, it's there because we're Americans. People pay for it. Exactly. And you know, when you're hearing. Uh, kids saying, you know, we hate the country, they're stepping on our flag. You know, as a true American and a patriot, it, it hurts your heart to watch that. And uh, oh, I forgot, they were also burning American flags today. Yeah. You know. So, thank, well, you. thank you for thank you for protecting me. I had no idea how dangerous it was. And yeah, I, I appreciate you being there. And the other uh, I was really surprised how fast the state police got me out of there. Jakari Jackson coming to you here with a news blitz. We have a few articles about police. We're going to get started with this one right here in the state of Texas. And this is Governor Greg Abbott. Targeted killings of police should be a hate crime. Abbott announced Monday his plan to lobby for adding his Police Protection Act to Texas law. Along with extending hate crime protections to law enforcement, the measure would increase criminal penalties for any crimes in which the victim is a law enforcement officer. Now, I can understand why Abbott wants this, and I can also see potential problems with it. First, let's talk about why he wants this. Uh, just in my short time here in the state of Texas and even during uh, Abbott's administration, there have been some many, many high profile attacks on police officers. Of course, we know the ones that happened in Dallas, not just the most recent one, but also there is one uh, a year or so before where the Dallas police station itself was attacked. A guy came in his, what the media referred to as his zombie apocalypse van, uh, opened fire on the police station, also a car that's parked down the street. Myself and Joe Biggs, we covered that. We actually got to walk through the crime scene while the FBI was there still picking up shell casings, taking pictures and all the stuff. So with that in mind, I can understand that. Also right here in Austin, Texas, where Abbott is, where the, uh, where the Texas State House is, the Austin Police Department was attacked as well. Now, I believe that was over a holiday weekend, a Christmas weekend, Thanksgiving weekend, something to that effect, where another assailant went to the Austin Police Department, shot up the police department. He was dealt with later, but regardless, uh, the shooting happened. And it took the police a, a good while to fix that, those windows that were busted out. Because I just remember driving down 35. That's where the police station is, just right off 35. And for months and months, uh, the windows were shot out at the police station as a steady reminder uh, that it had been attacked. So I can understand why Abbott wants this, and I'm sure he has many police officers who will back him up on that. Now, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but my concern is that it may overextend. Once again, this is legislation that hasn't been written, so I'm just afraid that it may be a little too all-consuming. Uh, case in point, there's a situation a couple years ago where an officer were officers, they were doing a raid on a man's house and the guy thought somebody was breaking into his house. He put out his gun and he shot one of the officers who was entering, you know, it's pitch black in the middle of the night. He didn't know who it was. So that's my only concern is that it may be too broad and maybe that guy would have been charged with a hate crime if this had been retroactive at the time. So uh, if they can get issues like that ironed out, I'd be a lot more uh, open to seeing that legislation, but we'll see what happens in the months to come. Now, let's talk about a different place now. A sheriff is urging civilian staff to carry weapons to work. And this is something that's going on in Ohio. 
He says, hey, if you have a license to carry, go ahead and bring your pistol to work. In a memo sent to employees last week, Butler Sheriff, uh, Butler County Sheriff Richard Jones urged civilian employees and volunteers to carry their weapons at the sheriff's office while operating any department vehicle. Because when you consider the high profile slayings of police officers, whether it's uh, recently in Baton Rouge or a couple years ago in New York, where you had people who were sitting in their cars and they were approached from behind and had somebody shoot at them. It's a very scary situation, especially when you have uh, your civilian staff. Well, really all officers are civilian staff, but the guys who don't normally carry a pistol on their hip, uh, you want them to be armed as well because they could be driving a department vehicle, uh, out, whatever they're doing, pumping their gas and get shot in the back of the head. So he at least wants his officers or his uh, civilian staff to have a means to protect themselves. Now, briefly, we're going to touch on some international news and talk about an axe attack that happened in Germany and several people were injured on a train by a suspect. So basically, this was an assailant. He was armed with a knife and an ax, and he was identified as a 17-year-old Afghan man living in Bavaria. And in the initial incident, the train's emergency brakes were deployed and the attacker fled into a nearby town. The teen was aggressive and tried to attack cops with the ax before they opened fire and killed him. And the point I want to think about with this is you have a guy who's armed with the ax, he's armed with a knife, people call the cops, the cops show up with, what, a gun, and they shoot the guy. And this is, this is the reason why uh, you have a mean for arms. So if somebody does attack you with a knife or ax or a baseball bat or something else and they're completely in the wrong, you can pull out a pistol and shoot them. So that's my thing uh, with that. Of course, it's German, so it's not so much a Second Amendment issue, but uh, just a armed person issue in general. And also uh, talking about the attacker, they say, though a pro-ISIS group had claimed responsibility, they say that he's not officially linked to any terror group. So it's like many things, people may uh, claim responsibility for it or they may be happy that it happened, but it doesn't mean that the person is necessarily in cahoots with that organization. So that's it for right now. More reports on Infowars.com. Recently, CNN's Don Lemon sparred with constitutional champion Sheriff Clark over the exploding war on police. Let me ask you this. Do we know that, the, that generally the American law enforcement officers are racist? Do we know this? First of all, this whole anti-police rhetoric is based on a lie. There is no data, and you know this, that law enforcement officers treat black males different than white males in policing in these urban There centers. is data that supports There is not data. Oh, no. The argument between Lemon and Clark is a perfect example of the tug of war over the perception of the statistics of police violence versus a particular race. Furthermore, the argument displays the divide between the people of the United States and the full-blown propagandized media intent to foment division among the common citizens of the United States. We want you to know that our hearts are out there marching with them. Here at CNN, a panel of commentators moved by the protests put their own hands up after the grand jury decision. And that intent is becoming more and more apparent. Comedian and actor Kevin Hart recently pleaded with other celebrities to speak out on his Instagram. Hart wrote, I'm asking that my other fellow celebrity friends, entertainers, producers, writers, directors, athletes, I'll take a day out of your schedule to simply talk and try to come up with a solution. I don't want to see a war in any way, shape, or form. I want to see change. I want to see the justice system change. I want to see people walk the streets without fear. The changes have to come from the top. We can do better, people. Don't let the media force a race war. Rapper Joey Badass echoed Hart's logic. When he wrote, what the government is doing amongst our people is downright disturbing, but not surprising. With all of the conflict and propaganda, I believe they are simply trying to start a civil war within the USA amongst black and white. They're simply pushing us to our limit so that we can all get together and rebel so that it makes it easier for them to kill us, black people mostly, and anyone who acts out against them. Recently, Obama took a blowtorch to the raging inferno of the growing divide spiraling out of control in the United States. As Town Hall reports, predictably, Obama fanned the flames, calling on the U.S. to do better. 
and said that the controversial incidents arising from the police use of force were not isolated incidents, but rather were symptomatic of a broader set of racial disparities that exist in our criminal justice system. He continued, when incidents like this occur, there's a big chunk of our citizenry that feels as if because of the color of their skin, they are not being treated the same. And that hurts. And that should trouble all of us. Ted Nugent, the Motor City Madman, responded to Obama's race war cheerleading. Nugent writes, the evil man is doing this on purpose. He wants a race war, but we will not give him one. Obama will go down in history as a maniac America-hating freak with his fundamental transformation scam. And if you still think only black people are being shot by police, well... But when police kill, should they judge themselves? A police officer had taken a gun, put it right to his temple, and fired a, a fatal shot in, in the backyard here in front of his mother and his sister. Uh, he was grabbing Michael by the neck, and he grabbed him by, by the shoulder, and within a couple of seconds, they took him off camera. Police and county investigations declared the shooting justified. Uh, within two days before the crime lab report, uh, before the autopsy were complete, uh, they had cleared themselves of any wrongdoing. This is video taken by a passerby. Dylan has been shot. Police won't say if Dylan had a weapon, but his brother and cousin say he emphatically did not. He had his headphones in, you couldn't hear nothing, and they finally surround him. Is when they were like, you're on the ground, pull up his pants, and they shot him. Arms out to the side. Are you all? I don't have a weapon. Hey! Get your. You can't son, do that. Get your hands behind your back. You're under arrest. You can't do that. Get your hands behind your back. Hey, officer, what are you get doing? Get your hands behind your back. You're under. Officer. Ow! He was lying in bed. He wasn't reaching for a weapon. Two people barged into his room, and 10 seconds later, were unloading 16 bullets into his body. The shooters were Department of Corrections Officer Chris Rongan and King County Deputy Aaron Thompson. They'd arrested a parole violator at this Auburn house, but surprised Theo Harris in bed, shooting him when they mistakenly thought he was reaching for a gun. Get your hands out! Get your... Get them out! Yeah, there's a race war, all right. A war on the human race by random trigger-happy police that our justice systems rarely prosecute. But it still doesn't mean all police are capable of committing the same heinous criminal acts. You want to solve this? Take a unified stance against the justice system. More murderous cops in jail means more accountability. Meanwhile, the last remaining officer, Lieutenant Brian Rice, on trial for the death of Freddie Gray after not securing Gray's seatbelt, walks. Wouldn't it serve the establishment's race war agenda to have those police responsible for Freddie Gray's death to go free? Cannon fodder for a race war hyped by the globalist mouthpieces over at the mainstream media? Perhaps maybe we should all just repeat what the globalists have been whispering among themselves for decades in order to sober up and face the truth. The seeping soft war on humanity we are all faced with, waged by corporatized eugenics programs, expresses the elitist sentiment that no lives matter except for those of the elite, because full-scale eugenics programs are all around you. Utilizing a monopolized handful of media conglomerates to generate fear and disinformation, all for the sake of pitting us all against each other, no lives matter. Think about it, George Soros-backed Black Lives Matter protesters, while you block traffic, putting your life and everyone else's in jeopardy. John Bound for Infowars.com. All right, Kid Daniels here with Infowars.com at the Republican National Convention in Cleveland, Ohio. And this is what they call Media Row where all the mainstream media reporters get together and type up their headlines against Trump and distort reality. Let's just walk through here and take a look. This is just, this is such a ridiculous maze of people. So we got BBC, oh, BBC. Get your propaganda there, your anti-Brexit propaganda. See. Yeah, selfie sticks are getting very popular in media. 
the daily signal. Oh, they're actually not bad. They actually broke a lot of good stories. I think they yeah, asked the Cheryl Atkinson stories about the media manipulation. So they're good. So you got a reporter right there about to go in there, get his makeup. Let's see, walking here. Politico. <laughs> their booth is just as empty as their stories. Let's see, radio. Yeah, I think I started at the radio wing of the building. So let's keep walking through here. Oh, catering. Oh, wow. CBS radio. Yeah. It's about the microcosm of their audience size, probably. Oh, here's the trendy section. Yeah, so when we first walked in, Josh, Zimmerman, uh, Josh Owens, Wayne Matson, and I, we went through here, this area first. And it's, yeah, this is like trendy zone. The millennial media. Yeah, like just Skype. Oh yeah, yeah, here's Snapchat. It's like the first booth that you see when you walk in here. It's a Snapchat booth. This is media, that's a Snapchat booth. <laughs> so that's just continue our journey here. But yeah, if you ever wondered why all the mainstream media has such the same narrative, especially the anti-Trump narrative, it's because they can just come in here and sit on the couch, conspire. I'm not saying those people are conspiring, but you know, you get the, my point. All right, folks, that's going to do it for tonight's broadcast. InfoWars Nightly News will return, Lord willing, tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Don't forget to subscribe to the Alex Jones channel on YouTube. We'll see you guys back here tomorrow night. See you.